Hi viewers and welcome to the channel. If you're new, I'll tell you what this channel is about. This channel is about CAD, free CAD, engineering, CNC, design, etc. And I mainly look at free CAD and actually how to use free CAD. And that happens during the week. Now on Sundays, I call it scripting Sundays because FreeCAD has a Python API and we can use that to automate tasks and make tasks a lot more easier. And I'm trying to teach Python to engineers, but I'm trying to apply it in a real world scenario. So the hardest thing is when you're learning Python or learning a program language to apply it to something, to think up something to apply it to. So I'll teach you a piece of code and actually what you can use it for. And this video is going to be around Python and randomness. It is an important thing. It's quite good for aesthetics and it's also quite good for making quite unique pieces. It appears a lot in art. Remembering the, the actual resin and wood table craze, that's probably still going actually. So creating this random cut through this piece of wood. Normally you do it with a fallen tree and then you split it and you get the natural randomness there but you can you can do it quite easily with carving out a pattern out there so we're going to look at that or even creating something like a, a bee block so the bees will hibernate over the winter in here or even nest in there and we've got this random pattern here that we can actually use randomness for so those are the two real world concepts that we can actually use this for so this example is a more complete example. It's done basically in the same way as you would do an epoxy table. You would have two sides, two pieces of wood. So carve out a side so they fit together. Now I've done exactly the same. I've run a macro on this side to create a random path going through here. And I've done the same on this side. And you can see that if I jump into the profile let's bring the profile up on that one and the path so that's the path for this body here I'm just pressing space to show and hide that body and then the same for the other body go down here have a look at the path for that one so there's the path oh, sorry there's the profile and there's the path and can see that we've got basically the same each side. You've got a profile and a path and then the randomness has been added to those using the same macro. But I've just applied it to two sides. Also looking at it, if you think, I've actually applied some additional filleting and chamfering to these sides. So if I take off the fillet to this and the chamfer, you can see that the additions that I've added to those, let's take that fill it off. And that, that's what I had originally. So that would be good for, for your cut out for your actual epoxy tabletop if you so desire. But adding those extra fillets and chamfers, let's refresh that. then you get a different look. So that's the other one. So I, I've actually come in and chamfered these lines as well, or filleted these lines. You get a different look, but if you're a model maker and like making your model backgrounds and model riverbanks and stuff like that, then you can use this as well. So if you think of this as a riverbank, and that's your model, so you can actually create your, your model trees and your your model houses and pebbles and stuff and start filling these in. But with a base, two pieces of wood, free CAD, bit of randomness, sh some chamfers and fillets, and there you have your own model that you can create. So there's another use other than the actual B block and epoxy table. And I'm sure there's many more. It's not nothing off the top of my head I can actually think about at the moment. But we can also also add layers of randomness to other faces. So for instance if I was making a, a really interesting epoxy table, I'll come in here and probably apply 
that random macro to a path and a profile along here and here as well so we get yes another layer coming down so that's a more complete example for you but we're going to be just doing a simple one with one macro one profile and one path and on a single piece of stock if you like this video please hit a like and also subscribe to the channel i also have a ko-fi site where you can actually donate to my contributions to the community and that's at ko-fi.com slash mang0 so let's have a actually look at the python language to actually do this so i'm going to actually create a new macro in here so i'm going to go to macros and i'm going to go create and i'm just going to put here random example so we're going to be looking at three imports and the first one is from random which is library in python and import and the command random this is a pseudo random number gener generator in there generates random numbers well they are random but if you start using something called seeds then you'll get the same set of numbers over and over again uh, i'll come to seeds and why they can be important and how they can be important um, in a moment so first of all we got this piece of code from random import random so we're importing the random library and the random command now to generate a random number we use a variable so we can call what the variable whatever we want so I'm just going to call it no and then we equals that to random and that will generate a random number so that's open close brackets there and of course we need to print that random number so if we just enable some panels so we want the report view start with going to python view later so if i run this you can see it's saying built in method random of random object so i've actually output the random there so you can see that's an actual object it creates so i want to up output the number so just put in a number and there's the number it's creating so as you can see it's random each time every single time we actually hit that play button we get a random number and you can see this random number is from 0 to 1 so what happens if we want to actually create it in a range for example if we look back at our resin table you can see this starts in the middle now if I was creating this I would actually use a subtractive sweep across here with some kind of profile and actually have these as a bezier or a b-spline line that goes here and I would actually affect the points of that b-spline with a random number to get some kind of randomness in there and I'll just be able to keep on generating that and change the look of this table and just find one that I like. Or if I were a customer, they could come to me and say, I like this type of look or this type of randomness. And you can go, well, you can go off and choose that. Here we are, here's, here's the CAD package. Let's sit down and let's go through this random generator and see what it looks like and see what which one we would like to use. So if I was actually building this we would have this as the line of origin so zero will be going through here and here would be the other line of origin so zero zero will be actually in the center so we'll be looking at plus and negative numbers so I would want to say we're looking at a range of minus say minus 50 to plus 50 to get the up and down effect so if we go back to FreeCAD and have a look at that then we can actually use another random number generator which is random range so that's in the random library I want to import something called rand range 
and then I can change this to and range and I can put in here minus 50 to plus 50 or just 50 and run that let's clear this down here and you can see when I run it we're getting 3, 39, 32, minus 32, minus 36, 6 so we're actually going within that range it's between those two figures now if we want to break a set of numbers then we can use this in a for loop we've got our random impulse. so now I'm going to actually come down and place a 4 in here say if I had 5 points let's count all, let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 7 points of randomness are along here the seven curves that I want to actually create randomly. I would actually go for, uh, create a for loop in here. And what I'm going to do is use the underscore. Now, I haven't used the underscore in my videos before. So, underscore is basically it's a variable, but it's not going to be used. So, I'm not going to actually use this. It's just a, a placeholder almost. So, I'm going to say for underscore in range. I forget how many points of randomness I said now. Say six. So, so we have six points of randomness, yeah? So put a color line on the end of there. Um, just a word of advice on here. Don't have to use underscore. underscore. If you feel that's a bit co uh, complicated or you don't understand that, just use anything in here. Say X, A, S, whatever you want. We don't have to worry about what it is. But underscore is kind of the standard if you wasn't going to use use a variable there so what we're saying is that we're going to go from the we're going to go six times around this loop and then we're going to actually create our random number so I'm going to bring this up I'm going to tab that over and also I'm going to use the print in there as well so what we're saying is going, going around six times and we should produce six random numbers And there's our six random numbers. So we could use these as the X or Y coordinates of those Bezier spines or Bezier curves. So we've got those random numbers there. Now there is something called seed. And this gets a bit confusing when we're talking about random numbers because if we seed a random number in Python and using this library, it actually creates a number of random numbers that actually can be recalled again just by passing the same seed. So if we use this, say this, this, this was produced with seed one, then if we did the same code with seed one and again, we'll get actually the same numbers. How they say this is random, it's quite confusing, but it means that we can actually produce different actual sequences that we can be recalled back and also the, you know this, this, the seed will actually can actually go from zero up to x where how far you want um, but they will be different you can even supply a random seed but what this allows is that if I show you we, we can actually use the seed to actually recall these and actually if a customer comes to us and say I really like this tabletop we we proved this before we could have given them the number saying this is table top 12 and that's the random number seed that we've used to actually create this table and we can actually recall that it's bizarre they call it random i don't know but this is where the seeding comes in and also um, if you want true randomness then we just use random range or random without a seed so let's have a look at seed so i'm going to call from random I'm going to import seed. As a matter of fact, I don't have to do that. I can actually come out here, put a comma, and import seed. Now, as you see down here, if we run this, we get six random numbers out. I'm just going to decrease this to two. And then I'm going to actually print a small divider so we can actually see what's going on 
graph and there we go so we can in, in between the dividers we can actually see the random numbers that have been generated so at the moment we're generating numbers and you can see they're all random they're different each time so minus 80 minus 32 39 26 if we introduce seed and all we have to do is type in seed and give it a number when we run this minus 33 22 minus 33 22 and you see they're the same if we change that seed then we get a different set what's actually happening underneath you know, is a number of mathematical equations or algorithms are actually placed upon that and actually producing that random number so if we change this in the range of three to produce three random numbers then we get an extra random number down there which is the same so we've got the same two but an extra number on there so if you think about what I was saying before if we had this nice curve here that was produced by say random number seed 9 So there's our numbers. Then we could recall that back for the customer. We could actually give them that number or actually mark that number on the bottom of the actual uh, piece that we've done. And they ring up and say, well, I really like this. I want a couple more of them to actually match. And so, right, okay, just give me the number and we'll produce this randomness down here. But if also, if you're thinking about, well, what happens if we change these numbers here? then we get a different set so we must remember what ranges we're using as well so as you can see you can see the different set in there so that's, that was our first set 928 minus 3 minus 16 minus 33 minus 27 and our next set because we've changed the actual range we're doing it we've got different random numbers which don't appear in the previous one each time we actually run this, this combination of the seed and the range, we get a set of random numbers that we can actually pull back if we're using the same combination. So on the bottom of the actual piece, we could put 9 minus 60 plus 150, and we know what to call back next time. So what I'm going to do now is actually create this in FreeCAD, actually create something similar. It's not going to be as that. So we're not going to spend too much time on it on it and i really like these smooth lines that run across the top and we've got some extra layers of randomness underneath but for the time being we're just going to create this smooth line and we're looking at the bezier curve to do that or the b spline and we're going to actually start a new sketch for that i'm going to get rid of this pane and i'm going to create a new sketch and I'm going to start with actually creating the base of the table and the part design. I'm going to create a body. And I'm going to create a sketch. I'm going to stick on the XY plane and let's hit OK. And I'm just going to add a simplistic square or rectangle. And we're going to make sure that it sits basically in the middle so I'm just going to fix the height I'm not going to worry too much about um, dimensions and what kind of dimensions we're working in because obviously 26 millimeter table is going to be very small same for a doll's house but this is just for examples this, this could be meters if you want well that's going to be a, a really big table um, forget my waffling so let's, let's just center this so I'm going to send, um, place this in basically near enough in the center. I'm not too worried. We can actually center this out if we so desire. And I'll, I just want to fix it in the center. So actually, I'm just going to use a lock constraint on there. So we've locked it down, locked it down to where we want. So we're going to use this center line to actually create the sketch on for the actual randomness. I can close out of this and I'm going to pad that 
and we've got a length at the moment of 10 millimeters so that will do let's go for eight so that's our theoretical tabletop my view looks a bit weird why is my view looking a bit weird that's it isometric there isometric view there we go so that's our tabletop that's sitting there so what I'm going to do now is actually create a sketch on this face so I'm going to hit top it's nicely positioned so I'm going to select the face and I'm going to create our path sketch the actual path that I'm going to subtract from this piece of wood or this object so I'm going to use the create a B spline in the sketch and I'm going to click on the outside now I'm going to come away from this center line um, because I want to actually show you something but this center line is what we'll be using that we should actually orientate everything along this center line but if I start placing things along this center line it's going to look a bit cluttered and I'll, it's, it's bad for the demonstration but if we look at this center line as you can see that zero on that center line so we've got minus eight all the way up to minus 27 but that's zero along there and remember what I was saying about minus values and plus values so if I'm going up if you look at the second set of numbers so if we look, look where the comma is so we've got x and y on those coordinates that are that I'm moving up and down there you can actually see 7 8 10 11 and then we could start it starts coming down crosses zero and goes into minus values so that's where our random range comes in so anything plus will go up here and anything minus will actually come down here but I'm just going to set this off of this line just to show you what I'm actually looking at so we're going to create our first point which is outside the sketch and then evenly we can actually use constraints to actually keep these even if we so desire I'm just going to place a number of points now this is a B spline but I'm not going up and down with this B spline um, I'm just creating a more or less straight line because we're going to be affecting this with our random values so I've hit the last point which is outside hit escape hit, hit escape again to get our mouse pointer back and I'm just going to move that constraint out of the way down there that diameter constraint so now I'm going to actually look at the view panels and I want the Python console and I'm going to clear this because we don't need to know about what's just happened then so pretend that line was along this line so the next thing we need to do is affect each of these individual points with with our random values so if we take a point and assign it a random value it's going to either going to go into the plus or into the minus at some random point and create our curve throughout so let's have a look what's actually happened there so we're going to start moving some of these points to actually see what's what's actually happened so I just zoomed in there and I'm just going to move these points in here so I'm going to grab one point and just move it up slightly and see what commands appear. So it's saying that uh, app.active.document.sketch01 it's actually hit the command move point and this issued parameters 1 and 3. So let's see what happens when we move this point. Well, we're starting to see a pattern here so move point two, then three. So let's grab this point. I'm making sure I'm grabbing the actual point that the circle is attached to because otherwise it'll get confusing because they're actually different indexes. Three, three. So if we just move to the right, so I'm using my shift and I'm in touchpad 
mode. Now touchpad you can use either a mouse or a touchpad like I'm doing. So don't think that touchpad is just for touchpads on laptops. It can be used for anything and it's a really good navigation mode. So I'm holding down the shift and I'm moving this across with just moving the actual mouse to the left or sweeping my finger to the left. And this one, if we move that, I suspect that's four and three. So we can see a pattern happening. Five and three. Now the reason why I started with the middle ones is because I know that if I move this one, that one says seven, and the other one says seven two. So the reason why I didn't show you those first is because that would have confused matters and the reason why those are different is because they're the beginning and end lines but we're not going to be affecting those those are going to stay where they are so I'm happy for us not to affect those and they're going to just stay where they are so I'm going to just stick that down on that line down there holding down the shift and moving to the right and we'll move that one down to that line there as well. And we can move these down if we so desire, but they're gonna be affected by randomness anyway. So we're not affecting the beginning and end lines. So that's good, so that's good. So we know that we need to affect lines, sorry, um, points one through two point five on there. So let's go back to our macro and start programming that in. So we've already got this here, so I'm gonna get rid of the seed. So we don't need that. May need it later for the demonstration, but we don't need that at the moment. So at the moment we're creating six points, but we need to go from one to five. So I'm gonna put in here just one to five. And in here, I'm just gonna output the actual point. And we're gonna actually place in here the variable. So we need to actually assign this up to the variable. So let's get rid of our underscore and actually use a proper variable in there. So these are our points. So I'm just gonna call this point. So let's place that in here. So I'm going to be plus point and then we're going to actually place in here and we're going to be affected on the y-axis. So this is just an output I'm doing here plus that. And I'm just going to wrap these in str conversions str so I'm converting those to a string so we see our output there and and I'm going to place something called a new line character and so it actually drops down a line each time we do this so let's see what we get so let's run that and you see that nothing's come up in our Python console that's because we now need our report view so a few panels Report view. Let's clear that out. Let's do a nice split between them. So if we run that now, we can see that at point one, we're going to have a randomness of along the Y 58. So we look at this and move over here. So this is not point one. Remember, this is point one. So that's going to go 58, so that's going to go plus. The other one's going to go 98, uh, 94, so that's going to be plus. This one's going to be down here somewhere, and the other one's going to be up the top as well. So that's good. So let's actually program that in. So we're going to be looking at using one of these commands, so the move point command here. So let's actually copy that command. And let's copy the top one, so we're looking at point one. So the first time we're coming in here, it's going to be point one we're affecting. So let's drop this in here 
and tab it over so it's in the loop. So at the moment, if this went round, we would just be affecting moving the point one to the same position each time, which is not what we want to do. So we need to use our point, which is in the points one to five, so each of those points. And the last number is not affected, so we don't have to worry about that. That's just saying line number one, five, and we're always moving point three. So really, this should be called line, but we're going to just leave it up as point for the time being. So in range one five, and we're going to come in here, move point, and we're going to use point in there, and it's point three. So we've got that point. Well, what's what we're actually moving there? So at the moment, this will actually place all of them each time this goes around it's going to place them all at this position which we don't want so this is the x position and this is the y position now i'm going to change these to x and y like so so that will set the points at x and y now obviously we need to actually add something to these so remember we're using the random range which we want to change the y-axis of this point going back so this is the y-axis I think so we'll look at our handler yeah so y is up y is up x is right and z is coming towards us so we want to change the y-axis of this point so we want to move this point up but still keep the x-axis so let's come back so I'm going to change this no to y. So that's covered that. So our x now, well we need to keep that the same. So we need to actually harvest the, the actual point location from current position. So as well as move point, we've actually got get point. And that harvests the vector from the actual point. I'm going to rem this out a minute with the hash. I'm going to do the same for the others just get rid of that print so we're actually just in this loop and what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how the actual get point works so I'm going to say x equals app.active document dot sketch zero one so we just copy that do this bit of typing and use the command get point and that requires the point index which is here so point so whatever numbers come in in here and three and what I'm going to do is just print X so that will actually print that point on screen so let's run that so let's clear this out and what you'll see is that will actually harvest all of those points in that range from one to five so one two three four We've got four points there so let's have a look one two three and four so we need an extra one in there so let's change this to six and run that again. One, two, three, four, five. So we've got five points in there. And if we take the point index, run that we can actually see the point index in there so that's the range it's run running so be aware of that I actually forgot about that is that we have to make sure that we actually running in the correct range so always output your range to make sure you got all the points in there so one to six for those five points and you can see it's harvest the vector so it's X and Y and said 
Now these are indexed, so these are zero based index vectors. So zero will be x, one will be y, and two will be z. So if we look at this, and the way we actually use that index for that vector that is used in a square bracket. So we can either use the square bracket on the end of here. So if x is zero, and that mean print x when I run this, move down the bottom, it's actually pulled those numbers out. Or what I like to do is not do that because it can get quite confusing. So I can actually use this as v for vector equals that and then print vector zero. If I run that, we should get the same. There we go. Just makes it a, a bit easier there. And if you want to, you can actually just take that and say x equals vector zero, and then we can print x. Just that when you go back to your code, if you're very first starting out and a lot of programmers try to be clever and place everything on the same line and it just makes the code unreadable. If you start breaking this out then you'll actually see the uh, code and what it's doing. When you're reading code from an engineering part, uh, perspective the easiest code is to read the less calories you're burning. I've heard someone say that hard code to read burns a lot of calories and it's it, it does your mind works over time and you're trying to figure out so the easiest and more readable you can make your code when you come back to it you don't have that point of saying well what the hell have i just done here so make it easier on yourself and just break this out even if it's multiple lines of code so we've got that there so we can actually start bringing some of this back in so we're going to bring back in the range get rid of I'm going to get rid of the print and I'm going to bring back our sketch move point and our print down here. So now we've got our X and we can use that in here like we've done here and that should actually move our point. So let's clear this out. Let's try to memorize what this looked like before we actually do do the actual command. So we've got a nice curve there. Let's bring everything along that line. So I'm just gonna zoom in a bit and just bring this along that line. And I'm gonna get rid of this Python console. And I'm just gonna bring that down so we can see what we're doing. I'm just gonna press shift and move this into position. And I'm gonna use shift and control, which will allow me to zoom in and out by pushing my mouse forward and back to make makes it a lot easier smooth it makes it a lot smoother to actually zoom rather than using the mouse wheel which can be quite crazy sometimes but the mouse wheel allows you to actually zoom into your, your pointer so hold, holding down control and shift and we'll just move that into position so I'm just going to move all of these just down on that line or near to that line as possible because they're going to be affected anyway. We could actually set up some code just to reset the positions if we so desire. And we can run holding down shift, move this across. So that looks good. That looks all good. And I'm going to save that before anything happens to it. So that's saved. Save our macro as well. So we've got our line there. So that's our macro there. And just reading over it, we need to change that Y there. So let's just change that to Y. And that will do us. So save it. So remember what we had before. That will do us. So when we run this and look back, we can see our line has changed. It's gone bonkers it's gone over here and that's because we haven't set the range so this is where the range comes in so let's have a look at where we are 
So they've gone off into the actual weed somewhere. So I'm going to leave them up there because they'll be changed the next time. So I'm going to place a point on here. So I'm going to have a look. Just use the point to actually see see where the end of this is. So it's minus 27 and or well, plus 27. So minus 27 to plus 27, which is perfect. And let's place that in here. So at the moment we're going minus 60. So minus I'm going to go minus 20 to plus 20. Let's give that a run and see what happens. So there we go. So we, you can see how this actually works. So we've got this nice curve here. Obviously, the more points we have, the more points of randomness that we have. And we'll run this again. Got a different curve. So we may need to pull this back in a bit more. Go minus 15 plus 15. Run that again. There we go, you can see them changing. So you've got these curves happening. We can actually tighten this up a bit. So minus 10. To minus 15, minus 10, oops. So you can keep on going. And what we'll do is actually place a profile along this to actually remove material. So we'll do that now. So we've got our random curve that we can just random lies to our hearts content and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a profile now so I'm going to close out of that and I'm going to create a sketch and I'm going to place it along the flip this over YZ plane this one here so I keep that and we're looking at this from the front on now. So I'm going to actually sketch something on on this face here that I can actually use. Well, it won't be actually on that face because we already actually created it. So it shouldn't actually be attached to the face because we're going to use it as a subtractive sweep across here. But I'm going to use that face as a template. Just click right and what am I going to use? I could make a funky shape in here to use as a profile or I could just go for something simple. Um, let's go for something simple. Let's just use that. So we're looking at something like that. And see, see you can't see at the moment. So if we use the switch between sex, section and full view that will actually cut a cross section in here so I can actually see where that's that's actually going so at the moment it's above so let's move this down go to our section view see where that's going It's actually massive at the moment. That's the reason why it's looking a bit weird. Let's go to section view. Okay. Bring this down and bring that up. I'm just going to use the shift and the control and just use my mouse to actually bring us in. And you can actually see this is is sat nicely on that plane there so it will actually remove material in a curve this way we could actually add some features on this if we so decide this is just the profile we're going to move and i want to make sure that i'm not going to make it too big either Let's pull that in so 
go something like like that. Let's go a bit deeper. There we go. So about that deep. I'm going to section out. We can go as deep as we want, or we can use whatever shape we want. So that's nice. So I'm going to close that. So that's my profile there. And what I want to do is move it back because at the moment it's too far over. So that's a sketch for the actual path. Let's rename that before we get confused. So that's the path. And this one is going to be the profile. And what we're going to do is change the position of that profile. And at the moment, this is all this grayed out. So I want to go along the x axis. Let's have the view and toggle axis cross so we can see what we're doing. So, yeah, red is x. So we're going along the x axis. So I'm going to change the x-axis in here, which I can't do. Because that map mode, map mode is flat face, so I don't actually want it actually attached to anything. So I'm going to detach that. That's OK that. So we can actually change that x-axis now on that profile. So let's change it to, let's use the up and down arrow keys and let's place it over here. And remembering the reason why you're just using the shift to actually move this, the reason why we actually start, we don't affect our start point there, is so we can actually put the profile back in the middle of that start point. And what should I should be able to do is because if that's detached, I should be able to click on the profile, that one there, jump into draft. Where's the profile? Can't really see there is a profile. Let's just hide that pad. Click on profile, click on the move. Don't want to copy. And that's moving on grid at the moment. So let's have a look at our placement here. So I'm going to take all of these off. I take all those off. So all those are off at the moment. So click on the profile, click on the move, and we'll move this. We can use use the placement if we so desire by just going to move that into position there's many ways to move stuff in actual free CAD and some can be a bit obscure because sometimes they attach to stuff and one move one way of moving won't work with another way of moving the other way I could have done it was actually gone to that profile and use the placement down here and use the X and Y corners in there so changing these Etc. So that's placed nicely. Let's bring back the pad. Using the arrow keys, just actually bring it into position. I'm going to use the subtractive sweep on that. So click the profile, and we're going to use the subtractive sweep, which is this one. Sweep so a selected sketch along a path or part design. Extractive pipe. The profile has disappeared because it's actually chose it. Now you want an object. So click object first and then click it. So that's removed. The, you can see the, the red that's actually removed material along there. So hit OK. And that's removed that path from there. So now if I just use the shift key to move that, you can actually see that path carved through there now. So we've got a nice path actually through there. And if we look in here, there's the profile and there's the path. So you can see the path there and the profile 
is holding on shift and moving this over there's profile there now if I wanted to I can actually double click this path inside the subtractive pipe and come into my random macro and let's just save this and hit play again let's move them so when we close out of this what we should see we so the subtractive pipe has disappeared let's just click on that to bring that back in that's actually changed so I've just hit the subtractive pipe and press the space bar to actually bring that back in so that's changed now so we can see that's carved that out so remember the more points we have along here the more random this will be and we can just double click on that path go into the macro and click again close that down may have to hit refresh each time and there we go so that's changed now looking at this what I need to do is bring in my view panels Python console and we need a command in here called app.activedocument.recompute and that will do the refresh for us so I'm going to come in here last thing I'm going to do is refresh save that hit run and there we go and there's the randomness here you can actually see you in the path So I think that's enough for this video, I was going to get a bit too long. So what I'll do next week is actually brawl that all up in a GUI and maybe look at creating a more complex example like this one where you've got the two sides and we'll actually create a GUI for that. It's not going to be too complex because you actually control each of the sides individually. We also will look at creating this B block and how you would do this randomness in here. Actually, this one is, is quite an interesting one to have a go at. So give it a go, see if you can actually solve this one, apply what we've actually done today to this sample. And a bit of hint, you're gonna to have to actually use your ranges on both the X and Y axis for this one because you have to contain these holes inside this block. So if you want to give that a go and learn a bit more about Python and randomness, and we'll tackle this one next week. So GUI, this one, and hopefully this one as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video and please look out for some more. And I'd just like to thank my current donators who have donated via my Ko-Fi site. I hope to see you again and bye for now. Stay safe.